it's in Jeremiah, one of the prophets, and he, um, it's Jeremiah 18 if you want to go there, uh, Jeremiah 18 verse 1. I love it in church that you don't hear Bible pages turning. It's all done on your phone. I hope you're at least bringing your Bibles on you. Lindy's got a real Bible. You'll be in heaven. <laughs> Jeremiah chapter 18, verses 1. And it says this. So this is a bit of a background for you. You know, I've learned something really new in the recent months as I've been studying. I told you I've been doing this theology stuff. And I... I was, you know, because the Bible is written and all the prophets are at the end and then the Jesus comes. And so I always thought that all the prophets, so here's me confessing as a 55-year-old guy who's been in the ministry since he was 18. I thought all the prophets were like in the time, you know, they were all at the end and then Jesus showed up. They're not. They're all with all these weird kings that did evil and good and evil and good and evil. So this is in the time where Hezekiah... Uh, was ruling, and it's also in the time where Jehoiakim, that's a harsh <laughs> Jehoiakim, was king of uh, Judah, I think it was. And uh, he was the son of Josiah. Josiah was what? If you know your Bible, Josiah was good or bad? He was good. He was loved by God and loved by all. Then his son came along, Jehoiakim, and he was very bad. He was so bad that in here, I'm not going to read this portion because I don't want to depress you all, but the rest of the scripture after I finish reading is what is going to happen to Jehoiakim and the queen mother. So, mums, read on if you want to, at your own risk. But he, he gets told that he will never have children who will ever see the face of Jerusalem again. And Judah, sorry, they will never, ever inhabit the land because of the evil that he has done. And the, all that he says that David won't have a place and that it won't be in David's line anymore. So God's pretty upset. So the prophet is just picking up. So that, that's not what I'm focusing on. So let's get rid of the focus of all the bad stuff. It's going to get worse, but I'm just going to preach it anyway. It's a great message, and I love this, what God can do through, in people's lives through this. It says, The word which came to Jeremiah the Lord, from the Lord, saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house. And that's not a church, that's the potter's house. And there I will announce my words to you. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something on the wheel. But the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter, so he remade it into another vessel, as it pleased the potter to make. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you as this potter does, declares the Lord. Behold, the clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The interesting thing here is that I love is, hang on, just find my notes so I don't mess it all up and go over time and under time. Sorry. It's undocumented. Let's go. So the interesting thing here, lump of clay. God has come along and he said, it's not, I'm not happy about what's happened. Basically what's saying here is the clay has said to the potter, yeah, I'm not too happy with what you're doing here. So we're going to do it our way. And then if you read the rest of that, that's how I was talking about. Joy of Herman. As a choir and all that, that's what the rest of the chapter is about. And then we read this chapter to <laughs> Jeremiah. If you read Jeremiah, it's a very depressing book. I'm right in the middle of it right now, so hence my messages might feel a little bit depressing right now. So I'm trying to bring it with life. That's why I'm wearing a leopard shirt. <laughs> and so this guy, he comes along and the pot is there. And so you imagine yourself, imagine me today as a lump of clay. All right? I am that. All of us are lumps of clay. If we really want to boil us down, we're all like little lumps. And so you imagine me. Here I am. Here I am, sitting in the corner, sitting in the room. Some of us are broader, some of us are thinner. It all depends what clay you pick from, I suppose. But there's this lump of clay, and the potter comes along and he picks me up and he picks up my lump and he's looking at it and he goes, Yes, this will do for what I want. And he picks it up and the little the wheel is spinning, you know. In those days they probably had ones that they did like this. I don't know how they did it in those days, but they're pretty good pots if you ever see them from when they dig them up. They're pretty neat. So let's pretend they had a mechanized one. And so there's the wheel spinning. And I don't know if you know this about clay, but if you get the you've got to get the clay in the center 
of the wheel. Because as it spins, if it's not, just has to be like a mill off center. And it starts. <laughs> and free. And so here we are, as little pieces of clay. God comes along and plops us down. There we go. We go plop. And we're just off center. And we go, oh, yes, this is good. That's not too bad. Oh, I like this. Oh, oh yeah. And God's going, I want to just shift you. I think, well, I kind of, kind of like it in this piece of God. I like the, the Hawaiian feel. I like the woo -hoo. And he's like, no, no, I want to try and get you over here. If I can get you in the middle. And you go, well, and all of a sudden, you start, oh, look at that. I've never seen a woman like that before. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> oh, probably goes over. Sorry, I lost my I'm not going to be able to use my glasses for this message. Picks the clay up, scratch it off the wall. <coughs> Peels it, puts it in the middle, starts going right. And you know what they do? Have you ever watched a clay person do it? They go, Whoa. So here you are, you've given your life to Christ. Little piece of clay, loving Jesus. So amazing! Jesus coming to my life and saving me! And you just start to open your eyes, and just as you open your eyes, the water! It's like the water! You know, it's kind of like the washing of the word, because the, the word is like the washing, isn't it? It's like the Bible tells us to keep washing yourself in it, allowing it to permeate you. And so, you start spinning, it's got you in the center. You're like, okay, I'm used to this, you're reading the word, oh, Jesus loves me. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. I said, oh, this is good. Oh, yeah. I'm liking this. Ooh. Oh, come to church, sing. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. He was the presence of the Lord. He said, see, see. All of a sudden, you feel this bit of pressure. Come down. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but it like pushes the, thumb, pushes the thumbs and the thumbs go. And all of a sudden, the sigh is like a, and it's like a, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, what are you doing to me, God? It's, it's not like that as you're applying the word to your life. As you're reading the scriptures, and you read something, and you go, well, that, I don't like that. So we miss whole books like Jeremiah, Isaiah, and all other people Actually, let's get rid of the whole Old Testament because that's really old school. And then you get to the New Testament. Blessed is he. I don't kind of like that one either because if I stay. So it goes as you're reading it, he says, as you let the water wash over you and the word, and all of a sudden he's. Oh 
all of a sudden, what is happening? He's going, what are you doing to me? I didn't sign up for him because I just wanted to be a Christian and have my happy coffee moment. He's going, I wanted to work on you. I'm a potter. You're the clay. And you start doing them, yeah, but, but God, all of a sudden, I just don't know. And all of a sudden, the sign starts to flop a bit because it becomes thin. And all of a sudden, and do this, but they sit back and they look at it from every angle. They turn the wheel a little bit. So it's like that moment. You all know it. Does Christianity get any better than this? Does following God is like amazing? This is like, what? I'm, what? I love Jesus. You come into all the prayer meetings, you go into everything, you go to the Bible studies, you get to everything you can get to. You join the music team, you serve down the back, you serve outside, you serve out there, you go and find somebody who needs serving, you just go and do everything. You love Jesus, and then all of a sudden, there's this little wire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's a little wire. And you go, and you're looking at it, you're going, that looks fun. Are we going to walk across that? What are we going to do? And you see it lie on the potter's wheel. And you go, that's odd. What would that be for? <laughs> oh, 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 my legs have just been cut out from underneath me. And there you are, flopping around like a fish, down on the bottom of the, the forest wheel. And you're like, my goodness, what is that? What have you done? God, what are you doing to me? And God said, I'm getting you ready for the next part. It picks you up. It's not always gently. Because right now you're really vulnerable. Because you're still a little bit soft and you could collapse. And he puts you on the shelf. And you go, huh, this is it. I've been through everything. Nothing. Nothing. Can hurt me right now. I'm <laughs> invincible. I'm going in there. See that room over there? I'm one room for the hole in the wall. <laughs> Can't blame the kids for that one, can we? But we, we go in, I'm going in, and you're walking across. You go, huh, I'm in the potter's hands. He's taking me over. Sucks to be you along with that pile. He walks over here with you, and your door opens, and in that room, there's Mary. Serving, tithing, giving, praying, reading. 
going to Bible studies? I could have done college six times. <laughs> Does he not know? And in this process of it drying, blemishes begin to show. Things that sometimes are hidden in the moisture of the growth stage of the plot. Blemishes of character. The interesting thing about it is that the potter, if he doesn't pick up on them, he can take that pot and go look at it and, and go, hey, that's pretty good, and if it's too soon, he can take it to the kiln. So about that person, that's that person, that one that goes, <laughs> comes into a, a meeting or a church or something like that. Goes, so, these are my credentials. This is what I've got to offer. Usually these people. Or that worker, that person that, that, that I've seen this time and time again. I've been with this person where you go, what the? Could you, could, I've been that part that's gone, God, it's what, my time. I think I've done the hard yards. I always remember I preached a message on Job and I'd been through a really rough time in a leadership role in the church. I wasn't a senior leader at the time. I was just a youth pastor. And I said, we just came through it and I said to Janine, I said, I don't think that, I think I've had, I just about through, been through, here I was at 32 years old. I said, I think I've been through everything that you could possibly go through. <laughs> Dumbest statement ever made. <laughs> I remember, I still do remember me saying that. And she said, honey, don't say that. <laughs> and I said, no, no, literally. I said, I think anything could be thrown at me right now. And <clears throat> good to go. I preached on Joe the next week. Kay came up to me. This Kay. This woman that you sent me. She said, oh, Darren, I'm just praying for you. That was a great message. She said, I'm just praying for you that God will keep you through. My Joe season... Which doesn't seem to have ended for the last 30 years. <laughs> but the problem was this, is that as the, 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 the pot looked great. And it was put in this kiln, and as it went into the kiln, it was burning. Because they, they, they reached pretty high temperatures. I'm not sure of the exact temperature. Can someone tell me? High. Hot. 800? Would that be a fair... 800 degrees Celsius. Pretty hot. Considering we reach a maximum of maybe 38 degrees Celsius. So 800, 10 times that. While it's in there, and if there's a blemish in there, so I, I, a lot of you are nodding your head, so if I'm telling the wrong story, you're going to call me out afterwards. But there it is in the middle. They don't just put one pot in there. They usually put a number that are ready to be fired. The interesting thing about this is that the pot that's demanded and said, I deserve this, as it's there and the heat begins because moisture is in the cracks and moisture, and what happens to moisture when it comes to a temperature of 800 degrees or climbing is it explodes. And there's a little pot going, mmm, this is, mmm, this is a toast. But guess what? It destroys all those around it also. Whether they were good or not. Because it didn't go through a step of the process correctly. So there you are on the shelf. Looking at everybody else. Each day somebody comes in, picks up that pot. And you'll go, you know when the prophet comes? Used to be like that. Now that it's more like this. Yeah. <laughs> and so there you are in the, in the room and the pilot comes in and he, he's looking over the, 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 the shelf. He's going, hmm. Yes. And you're in the back going, And he comes in, he reaches towards you and gets the one in front of you. What? Are you flipping serious? 
That's for all the South Africans in the room. Are you serious? And so each day he comes in and picks one. Eventually one day he comes and he picks up you. And as he picks you up, he, you say to him, you say, look, look, the guy here, he's been here for a while. He could probably go. <laughs> And the pot my holder looks at the pot and he says, You're good. You're ready. And as he walks to the room, he goes, you start to get home. What's it bad? What we do is, where are we going? Over here. What's over here? Notice God never says what's over there. He just says, buckle up. Buckle up. Yeah, but what about buckle up? I'm learning that when God says buckle up, just buckle up. I used to have a lot of questions. Now it's, I just find it's not worth it because he's got it. He's faithful. He's good. He's going to do everything he needs to do. He's going to help me. It's absolutely no problem whatsoever. <laughs> this, but you can feel 800, sorry, was that really loud? Did I just blow that thing? <laughs> Did I blow? Think I've broken a wall, the microphones. All of a sudden, the pot goes in. And you're sitting there and they go, gibberish when they're in the fire. I'm one of them. I don't understand. All of a sudden, you're in there. And it kind of becomes comfortable because you're realizing I'm meant to be here. No one can see you in here. It's just hot. I thought that was for the other people. Help. But it's that hard. God talks about furnaces and fiery things. Mm. <coughs> so we're in there and all of a sudden the door opens and you feel just all of a sudden, just a slight of cool air. And it's that moment you breathe. And as the, 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 that kind of the right thing, I don't know what it's called, that slides in, picks you up, brings you out like pizza thing. And he takes you out to the cooling shelf. That's the point when we think, I've been through it all. Cooling shelves make you sit. And you sit. And you sit. Remember in Jeremiah, the potter said that if you allow me to fashion and shape it away, I can do it. So he was talking about in communion this morning, many people, we were all turning to churches included, Christians included, we turned to stuff to fill the Jesus void that we're so desperate to have. And yet it's there. And so you're sitting on the cooling shelf and wondering what the heck is next for me? And you're cooling, everything around you, you're looking around, and you, there's other pots there, just hanging. Not a lot of chatter in this room. People aren't sort of like, pots aren't sort of like talking together. But it's kind of like Toy Story version. Of, it's the God version of Toy Story. Pots will come out at night and play. The pots are all talking, but really quite subdued. They're just like, you know what? Wherever we go, it's going to be cool. 
potter's got this. I don't know what, what he's got for me next, but he's got this. He cooled down and brings in, picks you up. And he's looking at you and he's turning you around and you're sort of like, mm, last time we did this, it sort of got a little hot. I think I might just keep my mouth shut on this one. He turns and he looks. And I've got perfect, perfect plan. He takes you out and he dips and glazes and does all those things. Turns you into a masterpiece. To be served. So others might drink. Because you're ready. He puts you down. The funny thing about it is when you've done all that, he puts you down on the, on the drawing rack again. Because the glaze needs to set and everything like that. So you're not... And then the day comes, and the potter walks in and looks at your glaze. And he reaches down, and at that point, the little pot looks up to the potter, and he genuinely says, See that guy there? been through so much. Could you not use them? Oh, I don't know if you know this, but the guy behind me and his family, man, man, they, they've really bought the journey. And the potter looks at the little pot, picks it up, You and I are at all different stages in that journey. You and I are in a place right now. <clears throat> Our church is in a place. The world is in a place. Somewhere in this melting pot of pottery. Wherever you're at, it's finding God in that moment. Children of Israel were told there and then, if they repent, it goes on at the end of chapter 18, it says, if you will turn to me, I will hear you. And the interesting thing about it is what I find in these days is a lot of people grumbling, complaining, not just church people, it's just people. It's our world that we live in. And we're not to be of this world. We're to be not affected by what's going on. Jesus said, don't be concerned about what's going on. And I find this that we're all, you know, people can look at us and, and you know, you, well, you're, you know, Graham's up there leading and he's doing his thing. I know this guy. I know what Graham fights at times in his own life. And you go, he still gets up and leaves because God is God is under a bushel. I don't believe you, our church right now, is on the shelf. And you know what? When God reminded me of this story, of this sermon, I could see it and I felt happy about it. I don't have to expect anything now again because he just reminded me that this is okay. This is my faith journey. He's got us as a congregation. He's got us as, us as an individual. Where are you at right now? Which, <coughs> which space do you find yourself? Maybe you're still on the potter's wheel. Maybe you're getting that part right now. Maybe you've migrated over to getting yourself sliced off. Maybe you're sitting there resting. I'm mean, does life get any better than this? I don't know too many people in that one. But if you're there, come to my place. I find that God right now is at work in everyone's life. The journey that we're all on as we fast and as we pray for our families and our loved ones, is a faith journey. I don't know what's going to happen on the 31st of October. I know what I used to think would happen when I finished fasting on the 31st of October. Boom! Everything was fixed. But all I'm expecting 
is that God is faithful and he will do that which he said he would do. His word is faithful. So wherever you're at right now, ask the Holy Spirit to build you in this moment, to strengthen you, to not waver. These are not the days to waver. These are the days to stay strong. And that strength may simply be, God, I don't know what to do, but I'm just going to stand because you're faithful. Some of us will go ahead. Some of us will go boom, boom, boom. And then all of a sudden it will stop because God wants to work in us. God is at work everywhere in the world. doesn't matter what nation, doesn't matter whether they love him or not, he's at work. It doesn't matter whether your family is following him or not, he's at work. He is maneuvering, jostling, he's like a giant chess king. And every one of the people that live on this planet are in the potter's shelf, on the wheel, on the clay lump, they're somewhere. And our job is no matter where we are, is to trust Him. To trust Him. I've heard people say this to me, is that they're trustworthy, but they're not trusting. You can't be both. You can't be that. If you don't trust, you can't be trustworthy. How can you trust God? How can you trust God if you're not trusted? If you're not trusting, you're never going to trust Him. Why do you always point up there, Darren? It's like He's over there. No, <laughs> you trust God. How do you? People could trust me, but I wouldn't trust them. That's that's not even not even a thing. You can't do that. It's it's what we are. We've got to be people that will open our lives no matter where we're at. I love the analogy of the pot. It's got so many dimensions in it. Breaking walls, blowing people's eardrums. And thankfully no snot came out today. That's a long story of a very big event. And, uh, which I won't tell you. If you want to know, ask me after. Telling this version of it, it was, I did a lot of spinning, less spinning today because I didn't, too many people, which was not a nice thing. It's amazing what happens with the spinning and the force that comes out. But where are you at? Where are you at, Mr. Clark, right now? Where is the clay? Where, is, where are you? Because it's important that you know, because when you know that, you know God's got it. But if you're always fighting it and going, no, I hate this, I don't want that, why can't they see this, why can't this, blah, 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 blah. i got to sound like this at the moment. I just want life to be right. I want God to speak to me. He is. Just not that you think he is. But I meet people in the church like that. I just want direction. No, you just want to just follow God. Just follow him. Keep your eyes on him is faithful. Father, I thank you.